In this video, we'll walk you through creating a real-time analytic on streaming data using ArcGIS Analytics for IoT. This tutorial builds on the previous lesson in which a feed was created that simulates AIS shipping data. We'll configure an analytic to enrich that streaming data with the U.S. Coast Guard District in which the simulated ship position is located. A real-time analytic runs against a feed and performs processing on each new message as it arrives. You can create a real-time analytic from either the main page or the real-time analytic list page. The first step in designing a real-time analytic is choosing the input feed. You can select an existing feed or create a new feed on the fly. For this tutorial, choose existing feed and browse to the feed that you previously created, which is named ship position simulation or similar. Once you confirm selection of this feed, the real-time analytic editor opens. This is where you design your analytic process by configuring various tools and output actions. By default, the editor displays the analytic and workflow view, which is a linear step-by-step -step layout. Next, you should save your analytic. Although the process only contains an input feed at this point, saving early and often is a best practice. You can leave your work and return to it later if necessary. Give your analytic a descriptive name, such as AIS real-time processing, and optionally a summary such as filter, modify incoming AIS data with streaming output and feature storage. Then click Create Analytic. Once the analytic is saved, several new options are available in the editor experience, such as the help documentation and validation information. You should see that there's two validation issues in your analytic. Validation messages inform you of any issues in your analysis that would prevent it from being run successfully, such as not having outputs configured. An analytic can be saved at any time changes are made, and when it has no validation errors, the Run button will be enabled. Next, we'll add tools that perform real-time analysis on this AIS shipping data feed. With Analytics for IoT, you can build a sequence of successive processing steps in a pipeline from inputs to various outputs. On the toolbar at the side, expand the Summarize Data menu and select the Join Features tool. This adds it as the next step in your analytical process. We'll use this join tool to enrich the inbound AIS data with the name of the U.S. Coast Guard District in which it, each ship is currently located. To do that, we need to obtain the Coast Guard District data, so click the Select Data button. Analytics for IoT allows you to bring in static tabular or vector data as data sources to enrich, overlay, and geofence against your real-time observations. You can easily access standard geographies, like U.S. or world administrative boundaries, you can select a feature layer from your content or ArcGIS organization, or bring in data sets from cloud data stores and third-party APIs. For this tutorial, we'll bring in the Coast Guard data from a feature layer. When adding a feature layer to an analytic, you can search for content available in ArcGIS, or you can enter a URL to a specific feature layer that's publicly available. If you're following along, this URL can be obtained from the real-time analytic quick lesson in the Analytics for IoT documentation. After entering the URL, click the sublayer called U.S. Coast Guard Districts. Feature layers can have more than one sublayer, so this allows you to select the one that you really need. On the next screen, there's options to filter and reduce the amount of data that's being imported. You can enter a SQL query to filter the data, or specify a subset of the feature layer's fields if you don't need all of them. Both of these are good practices to employ to reduce the time for data load. From here, the data source configuration process mimics the process for creating a feed. Analytics for IoT queries the data source, obtains a few sample records, or features in this case, and derives the schema. As before, you can adjust incoming field names, or you can drop fields. Next, you can also identify key properties in this data source if they can't automatically be determined. Now in this case, since the data source is a feature layer without any date fields, the location and date time information are established for you. As this Coast Guard district data represents static boundary areas, it doesn't really have a track ID, although you can select district ID if you prefer. With that, this Coast Guard data is configured properly for use in your analytic. Now that a join data set has been established, the join features tool can be filled out. Under Relationship, check the Spatial checkbox and choose Intersects from the drop-down for the type of spatial relationship. In this lesson, you're detecting when any of the ships intersect a Coast Guard district area, and you're joining that contextual information to the ship data, which can then be used for increased situational awareness or further analysis. Next, you'll configure the summary fields. For the attribute, choose the attribute that says District NA, which is short for district name. 
For statistic, choose any. And for the output field, you can replace the automatically created field name with something more destructive like district name. Then click the Add Statistic button to finalize this statistic. The Any Statistic type means that of the records that satisfy this join, you'll grab any value from the indicated field to append to the input data. In this case, the Coast Guard districts delineate distinct areas and they don't overlap, so a ship would never join to more than one district at a time. So the Any Statistic serves as a way to select the district name value from that single join record. Click Apply to update the tool properties, and at the top of the Analytic Editor, click Save. Next, click the button on the far side of the green toolbar. This allows you to toggle the Analytic Editor between its different views. This view is called Model View, and it represents your analytic on a graphical canvas with a flowchart-like visualization. Model View and Workflow View can be used interchangeably when your analytic has a single processing pipeline. When you create complex analytics with multiple processing paths, you would work only in model view. At this point, we'll add two outputs to the analytic that'll allow you to store and visualize the data. Expand the outputs menu on the toolbar and select feature layer new. When storing data to an output layer, you have a couple different options that service different real-time use cases. For data storage method, you can choose to add all new features or just keep the latest features. This will retain only the latest observation for each track, in this case, each ship. The Add New Features option retains all incoming data rather than just the most recently received observations. For each time the analytic is run, choose Replace Existing Features in Schema. If this box is checked, each time the analytic is started, any existing data in the output layer will be deleted, and the schema of the output layer will be regenerated based on your analytic process. This option is useful when you're developing and testing your analytics, which means you might be adding, removing, or changing tools between runs. With these two settings, you may notice that the data retention options are hidden. A data retention policy isn't necessary if you're only keeping the latest feature of each track, because your data set's not likely to grow indefinitely over time. Click Next to proceed to the next step. For the output feature layer name, enter something descriptive, such as shipping inside USCG districts, and optionally a summary, and click Complete to finish the configuration of the new feature layer output. In model view, this adds a new output node to the canvas. As you may have multiple processing paths in model view, you explicitly connect different nodes together. So in this case, connect the output port of join features to the new output feature layer. It's a good idea to save the analytic at this time as well. Notice also that the validation of your analytic is successful with no errors because you have completed a full pipeline and you have at least one output in your process. Finally, we'll add a second output that will send the features to a stream layer. Expand the outputs menu on the toolbar and select Stream Layer New. The first step in creating an output stream layer is to optionally specify a related feature layer. This is only necessary if your outgoing data doesn't have geometry, and what you would like to do is associate it with an existing feature layer that supplies the geometry based on a join field. This is useful for cases where you have stationary sensors that don't repeatedly report their location. In this case, this doesn't apply, so go ahead and click Next. With that, the only remaining step is to name your output stream layer. For the output name, enter something descriptive, such as shipping inside districts with an underscore stream to specify that it's a stream layer, and optionally a summary. Go ahead and click Complete, and as before, connect the output port of your Join Features tool to this additional output, and save your changes. The real-time analytic now has the necessary inputs, tools, and outputs. Click Start at the top of the editor. When running, the analytic will receive each simulated ship position, join it to the name of the U.S. Coast Guard District in which the ship is located, and write the output both to a new feature layer and to a new stream layer. Notice that the Start button has translated to Initializing. It may take an analytic 15 to 20 seconds to start up, and then the button will transition to Stop. This indicates that the analytic is currently running. Now that the real-time analysis is running, we'll add the output layers to a web map. First, we check our feeds page to make sure that the feed is also running, which means we can expect the input data to be flowing. Then, go ahead and reload the real-time analytic. Right-click the feature layer output called Shipping Inside USCG Districts and choose Open in Map Viewer. A new browser tab will open to the ArcGIS Online Map Viewer. 
You may also want to change the base map to the gray canvas map to simplify the map visualization. Next, click the Add Data button in the Map Viewer and add a layer from the web. Here you can paste the same layer to the U.S. Coast Guard districts that you used when you were configuring the analytic. You can also take this layer and move it down below the ship points for easier visualization. Select one of the ship positions to open up a pop-up and explore its attributes. Note that each observation has been enriched with the name of the U.S. Coast Guard district in which the ship is currently located. We can see that this ship, being in District 13, is tagged appropriately, as is this ship, which is down in District 11. Now this feature layer displays the latest simulated position and will only update if the layer is set to refresh. Conversely, you can use the Add Data button and search for layers in your content to select your output stream layer, which includes the live information and shows each position of a ship as it is simulated. Observing these points, we can again see that each observation is enriched with the associated district as each point is received. This concludes our tutorial on designing a real-time analytic and enriching streaming data with its geospatial context. From here, you can add additional tools to the real-time analytic to perform geofencing or calculate motion statistics, or you can collect the data over time and use a big data analytic to summarize the ship tracks in various ways. Thanks for watching.